Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be going over my process for cleaning and prepping my cards, getting them ready to send off for grading. I did get in on Friday to HGA, so I was able to get a nine card order in. And this, these are the nine cards that I selected for this particular submission. And so some of them are PC cards. So I'm not really worried about the condition or the centering or things like that as much. And so these are the cards that I got. I did submit, or I will be submitting. So you got the Luka Doncic, My House insert out of Optic, and then we have the Dirk Nowitzki, NBA Hoops Slam, and then I'm also going to be sending in this Luka Doncic Revolution, and then uh, this is the Tua Tagovailoa Select Die Cut Light Blue Prism. So I'll be getting that one ready, sending that one off, and then we have. The LeBron James Prism, the Kobe Tribute card. So excited for that one. And then this one here, the 2008 Topps Chrome Dallas Mavericks, Dirk Nowitzki. Excited for this one. So we'll see how that one goes. We'll be getting that one ready. And then we're going to do the Revolution Vortex, Luka Doncic as well. And then we're going to end it with the Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert Crown Royal. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. We'll go one at a time, of course. So what I use, I use a napkin now. I usually use two napkins side by side, but I only have this one, so this is what we're gonna go with. Just gonna have to be really, really careful. And so start by getting the card out. And then I'll usually, whenever I clean a card and get it ready for sending in. I will use the same top loader that I had it stored in, but I will also use a new sleeve, penny sleeve, just to make sure that the surface that I just cleaned is only touching the inside of a brand new penny sleeve. That way, if there was any kind of dust or debris or anything like that on the card while it was in the original sleeve, it doesn't transfer over. So let's see, we got, looks pretty clean. I do see some a little bit of print lines here on the back. The front looks good surface-wise. I did inspect most of these. Like I said, some of these are PC, which is what this one is. And so just lay it down on the napkin. Fold over the corner very carefully. And then just bring this up. And then you're just going to wipe it down. So you don't, it doesn't have to be anything aggressive. Just, just really getting any fingerprints or... Any dust or debris that may be on the surface. So you just want to be very careful not to snag a corner. So which is why I put the card on the far side to grab it with. And then so I have all of this surface area here to loop it around so that nothing gets caught on the corner. So you just give it a good wiping. And then do the same for this side. Okay, then you're gonna do the same for the back. So I will exercise a little more caution. A lot of times when you are cleaning the back and you have the surface down, since the surface is more smoother than a lot of times when you go to clean the back, the car tends to want to slide around. And so I try to do it more in even just single strokes, going from the center out so that nothing gets snagged on a corner. And again, you're really just clearing off any surface dust or fingerprints or anything like that. So any damage that's gonna be on the card, Obviously, it's going to stay on the card. You're not just going to wipe away a scratch. Um, but there are some surface lines that are just that. They are just surface lines. So giving them, giving the card a good rub down will actually get rid of those. Okay. And nice and clean. And then I'll just go ahead and penny sleeve it. But what I do, since sometimes with the napkin, it can leave a little residue as well. 
or debris or whatever you want to call that. So I'll just take a microfiber cloth and just gently wipe it down just to get that loose napkin off the back. I'll check it one more time. And I can see a little something here on this little section. Don't know if the camera picks that up. So just try to very gently see if that comes off with the microfiber. And it did, so we're good. So I've heard stories on both napkins versus microfiber cloth. Um, I kind of do a combination of both depending on the card. So for these chromium cards, I do like to finish them off with the microfiber to make sure that they're extra clean. And so there we go. So then we'll just take it and place it in a penny sleeve. And then what I do is I get these, I picked up these little tabs. Um, you can get them at Walmart or any office supply store. And so I will put them off center, off to the side, where there's a good amount, but not too much. And I'll show you why here in a minute, here in a second. So about half an inch or so off. And then take our top loader. And we're going to put it in the top loader there. And this is just so that the grader, whenever they go to pull the card out, to minimize any potential risk of damage. So this just allows them to pull the card out, no problem, out of the top loader. So I have seen a lot of people who send cards in to get graded I talk about sending them in in a card saver versus a top loader. I personally prefer top loaders because I feel like it gives more protection to the card than the card savers. I do love with the card saver, your card isn't going to move around as much. So you can see it's kind of off to the left. And if you knock it around a little bit, the card's going to slide around in the top loader. But it does have the protection of the penny sleeve. And then usually what I do is I'll put some tape, some painter's tape over the top, um, which I did not prepare any painter's tape ahead of time. So I have to go back and do that. But what I'll do is I'll put the painter's tape over here to pinch it closed so that the car doesn't slide out. And then I'll put it in the team bag. And so we'll have the painter's tape to keep the card steady in the top loader. And then this right here, actually, whenever you close it with the team bag, close it within the team bag, you see it'll pinch at the top. So that'll prevent the actual sleeve on the inside from floating up. So I just feel like it gives extra protection. And so then I'll just seal it up like that. So I will go back and add the painter's tape to all of these. Just wanted to show you this first one, how I get that done. And so then I'll just put them off to the side and go to the next one. And same thing. Just want to be careful handling these, of course, getting them out. So this is going to be the Nowitzki Slam insert. And we're just going to do the same thing. Just very carefully, especially on these paper cards, you want to definitely be very careful as they tend to bend far easier than any cards with that thicker card stock. And so you're just going to do the same thing. You're just wiping it down, making sure there's no fingerprints or debris on there. Then you're just going to do the same on the other side. And I wear gloves whenever I'm preparing my cards, getting them ready to send them off, uh, just because of the oils on the on my fingers. You could debate back and forth whether it's safe to wear gloves. I know there's far more potential to for the glove to snag on the card, um, but the simple shortest answer that I can give you or argument that I can provide is I trust myself. Accidents happen all the time, of course, but I trust myself, so... I wear gloves just because whenever I send these in to be graded, I just want to make sure that there's absolutely nothing on the card. And my first submission, I got four out of five 9.5s. So I'm going to stick to my argument that 
this way has been effective for me. To each their own, of course. If you prefer to wear gloves or not to wear gloves, um, you know, I'm not going to knock that. I would love to hear anybody's thoughts on, on the topic, gloves versus no gloves. So just drop a comment below and let me know, do you prefer wearing gloves or would you rather not wear gloves and not risk it? Okay. And so that's that one looks pretty clean. Don't see any smudges, no lines. Front looks good. Okay. Just handle it very carefully. I think uh, for me, the trick is just trying not to do too much at once. Just take it nice and easy. There's really no rush. The order's already in. So it's in the system. It's just about getting your cards ready and sending them off at this point. So no need to rush. Just take your time. And these sleeves I have already prepared beforehand. So if you'll notice, there is a cut on the side. So I do that so that when I slide the card in, I don't have any troubles with the corners. Nine times out of 10, it's fine. Just putting it in the sleeve if you're careful with it, but that's just a little extra something that I do to make sure that the corners stay nice. Uh, so just get one of these tabs, same thing. Throw this in the top loader. And I'm gonna throw that in the team bag as well. I'm not gonna seal this up because like I said, I am gonna go back and add that piece of painter's tape to the top loader. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave these unsealed, but I also put them in the, in the team bag to prevent any dust or debris or anything getting in there. So we'll just go ahead and leave that one like that for now and continue. This one I had in a one touch, as you can see. And so we'll just take it out of the one touch very carefully. This one I actually purchased off of eBay, and so it came in the top loader directly like this, and I just haven't messed with it. So we'll check out the surface here. Okay. All right, and so it does look very clean. Nice wipe down, should take nice care of it. I do see a couple of little dings on the top here, right on his hairline. So the back looks very, very clean. No print lines, no smudges, no nothing. And so it looks like that's the only issue, so that's fine. This is definitely a PC card, so I'm not really concerned about that. So even if I get a nine on it, I'd be happy with that. Just wanna see it in one of those HGA slabs. So just comparing HGA to PSA, as far as just the slabs, not the company, and quality and all that. Just comparing the look of the slabs, I do have a couple of PSA cards um, slabbed up. I was a fan of the frosted look on the PSA slabs where the where the outline, the border, is actually frosted and not clear. I, I kind of like that. Um, I wasn't really sure once HGA came out and they did their slabs clear all the way through. Wasn't really sure how that was going to look. I did think that at first, it would take away from the card itself, being able to see everything in the background of the slab. Uh, but I will say, getting these slabs in hand through from HGA completely changed my mind. These slabs are incredible. It's like, it's like, what it's like looking at your card in HD, in 8K. I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous. So I am definitely a fan of the HGA slabs. Okay, let's take a last look. Looks good. Just wipe off the surface. And get a sleeve for it. Okay. And then we're just gonna do the same. So the same. And of course, the reason why I put it off center, I was putting it center, uh, but then it kind of throws off where you put the painter's tape once you have it in the top loader. So this one wasn't in the top loader. So we'll just get a new one. So with it being off to the side like this, then you can put the painter's tape right in the middle to get the best security 
um, as far as preventing movement for the card during transit, during shipping. So I was putting that in the center, but then I had to put either one piece of tape and it would still be loose on this side or put two pieces of tape. And I just felt like that was a little excessive. So, so I just moved that over to the side. They could still get it out the same as you saw earlier on the first one I did. And then just put the painter's tape there. And then the same, just throw it in a team bag and seal it up. And then there you go, it's ready to go. So like I said, I'm gonna leave that because I need to go back and add that painter's tape. And we'll just keep going. Sometimes you'll see these cars are stuck. So I usually just try to very carefully from the from the top of the sleeve, just kind of roll, roll it out to get it unstuck and then get the card out. And that's part of the reason why you definitely want to go through and clean your cards before sending them. Because a lot of times the, the plastic can stick to the card and it can leave these smear marks or these weird smudge marks or even some of the plastic may transfer to the surface. So definitely want to make sure to clean all of your cards before sending them out. And then maybe we wouldn't get so many complaints about the surface grades. So let's see here. So we'll just do the same thing. Very gentle. Okay. We'll go to the other side. I do have some other I have another die cut over at HGA right now. And then I have some other variations of Tua getting graded. So definitely excited to see how these come back in these slabs. And the same, remember on the back side, just single stroke wiping out from the center to the edges. Okay, and that's that. We'll take a look. And I do see it looks like some smudges from the sleeve on the back. So let's take a look at the front. Front looks pretty clean. I do see maybe two very, very small indentions on the card. Uh, but that looks like it. The centering actually looks pretty good. So I am going to try to get this with the microfiber cloth and see if that can get those smudges out. Sometimes the you know the, the risk you run purchasing cards offline to get graded is sometimes the listing is listed at, or the card is listed as mint condition or near mint condition. And they're very well maybe, but because of poor packaging and the way that they ship the card, it could actually get damaged in transit. And so that's just the risk you run when you're purchasing anything online. Not that I'm against ordering it online. I order a lot of cards online, so you just got to kind of be careful. Okay, so let's see if that did anything. Okay, so it kind of cleared up. And that may be, yeah, I think that's, so I did get the smudges and it looks like the white parts that are on there are actually from the card design. So you can see there's kind of like a like a smoky marble look to the card. So those that's actually what that is. You turn it in the light, you don't see it no more. So I think that got it. Which is again why I use a combination of both napkin and microfiber just to make sure I get a really good clean on it. Okay. These die cuts can be tricky to get into a sleeve, so you definitely got to be careful. And we're going to hit two with the pink. I am actually running out of these tabs, so I need to grab some more, but I should have enough for this order. Okay. Throw them in a team bag. And move on. 
So this is going to be the LeBron James prism. The infamous Kobe tribute. So very nice card. Looks good. This is definitely for the PC. I am on the lookout for the, some different variations and parallels in this card. Uh, the prices have come down quite a bit. When this card first came out in this set, the base card was going for oh, well over $100 by itself. So, And then I think the highest I've seen was, uh, I think it was an orange ice prism in this card for listed it was listed for 2000 I don't know if I've ever seen one's actually sold for that much but that was the highest I've seen this card listed for in the orange ice prism so I was actually able to pick this up the prices come down quite a bit so I was able to get one for the PC so just doing the same thing and turn it over And same on the other side. So this one does have, looks like, a slash in the actual card now that the surface is cleaned up. And it looks like there's some smudging going on on the top left corner and then a little bit here. So we'll just hit that with the microfiber. See if that gets it. Okay, so that may actually just be the image. It looks like there's some smoke in the background in the picture. So that may just be the image that I'm seeing. Yeah, the light's not really picking it up, so I'm going to assume that this one, however, is on the card. And now that the light is going, it looks like an actual, actually an indention and not a smudge. So don't think that's going to come out. Try one more time. Yeah, that's not coming out. Okay. Take a look at the front. So it looks like the front has a little bit of, maybe a little bit of residue from the sleeve. So we'll go over it with the microfiber. And sometimes you might have to add a little bit of moisture um, I'm not definitely don't recommend getting the card wet but you may have to breathe on it um, a little bit just to get the smudges off I uh, don't recommend doing that very often when you're cleaning a card especially when you're using the napkin because the moisture will get into the napkin and then you'll notice a lot more debris the napkin the napkin will kind of start to dissolve a little bit obviously it's not gonna be the same as getting it soaking wet but moisture is moisture, so just be careful. Okay. All right, much better. So there was some residue here. Looks like that did the trick. Uh, so we'll go ahead and sleeve it up. Okay. And we'll hit LeBron with the green. Should hit him with the yellow, but it's all right. And I was doing new top loaders too when I was preparing orders for HGA, uh, but with supplies being as hard as they are to come by now, I just use the same top loader that it's been in. Uh, I'm more concerned about using a new sleeve because that's what directly contacts the card so the top loader I'm not worried about so much that's really just for outside protection this is going to be our 2008 Topps Chrome Dirk Nowitzki and this one looks super clean so very excited about this one. Been wanting to send this one in. I've been holding off because they've 
have announced that they're doing their horizontal slabs or that they were coming out. So I've been holding off on this one. Um, but they have recently come out with the horizontal design of their slabs, saying that they are a few weeks away. So I'm sending this order in on a 30 day. And I saw somebody post online where if you, they reached out to HGA customer service and asked about their order that's currently sitting over there that's at a 60 day SLA and so service level. And uh, they responded, HGA did, saying to just make a notation to hold for horizontal slab and that they would do it. So I'm, I'm gonna send this order in. It is on a 30 day, um, but with their slab supposedly being a few weeks away from hitting production, I'm gonna take that chance and hope, I'm gonna include the note that I would love for this to be in a horizontal slab. So hopefully they're in production by the time this gets into grading and, and then goes off to be slabbed. So all, I'm going to do that for all of these horizontal cards, which is why you see um, the last bit of the order. It's all horizontal cards. I'm very much hoping to get them back in a horizontal slab. So we will see how that goes. Okay. So not too bad. I do see some other smudges. So the napkin's not really getting it that great. Um, there is a, looks like a ding there. And a little bit of smudging on the edges, which the edges are harder to get to, especially with, with just a single napkin like this. Um, so I'm gonna hit it with the microfiber again. I try to get a smooth surface on the microfiber where it's not just all wrinkled up. I also try to do it where the only point of the microfiber that's touching the card is where my finger is, just so that there's nothing that can get snagged on the card, or at least less, and just kind of do the same. So that looks like it got, there's still some smudging on the bottom, which is very common on these, especially on these older cards. If they sat in the sleeve and top loader and just kind of loose and been moved around a lot and slide around. So, yeah, I don't know if the camera's picking that up. There's still some smudges there on, along the bottom. So I'm going to try to hit that a little bit with a little moisture. Just a very little bit. Also being careful not to press down. You see I have my hands touching it, which is part of the reason why I wear gloves. I'm not pressing, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. I don't want to damage the edges doing this. So just want to get the smudges off. And they are still there. So I'll just hit it one more time and then uh, I'll work on it a little bit more later before I send it off. It's a little bit better, but they're still there, so I might have to work on that a little bit more. But we'll continue. And I'm not really overly concerned about it. This is definitely a PC card. But even so, a good grade is a good grade. So still try to make sure it's clean. Just because it's a PC card, I don't want to just send it in and not care. So there we go. And I'll take one more look at it before I actually send it off. Uh, but we'll just go ahead and throw that on there. Oh, don't forget the top loader. That would not be good. I did order a card off of eBay last week and it came in. That was an older card. It was a Jordan versus Magic Johnson from, uh, I believe, Skybox. Just an old 90s card. Thought it was kind of cool. Thought maybe if it looked in good condition in the listing. So I thought maybe about sending it in to HGA. It's not really a high, high dollar card, but I just thought it would look cool 
in a, in maybe a custom label slab. So, uh, but the guy sent it in bubble wrap. Just a card, no sleeve, no top loader. Sent it in loose, wrapped very loosely in bubble wrap in a big box. It was a small box, but for the card, for the single card just loosely thrown in there, it was a big box. And so the edges, of course, got damaged. So that was not cool. And the card, you know, the card sold for 99 cents. Nobody else bid on it. I think the timing of the auction had a fact, played a factor in that as well. It was kind of late. Um, so the card only sold for 99 cents. I still had to pay for the shipping though. So, you know, I mean, it is what it is. I'm not really going to raise a big fuss because it's 99 cents. But at the same time, I feel like sellers kind of know that if a card goes low, if they don't put a reserve, and they don't list it high and a card goes low, then they kind of just send it out. Not all sellers, of course, but there are some out there that I've had bad experiences with on multiple selling platforms, but not just eBay. So I'm not trying to bash eBay or anything. Uh, but yeah, if you're sending cards, you know, I always try to make sure that regardless of how much a card sells for, I always ship them out with care. And I would hope that everybody else would do the same. Show the same courtesy. So, let's get this cleaned off. I'm actually just going to go ahead and skip the napkin because I'm noticing a trend here. And it may be the way that I'm doing it. I'm not. I'm trying to be very, very careful because I have, I have left less surface area to work with on a single napkin. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit them all with the microfiber just to be on the safe side. really clean and go over with the microfiber okay so that looks pretty clean uh, actually, I'm going to hit this corner one more time. Okay. There we go. So that looks really clean. I really love this card too, this Vortex Revolution. It was really nice. I hit this in a break, actually. So sometimes I'll, I'll buy, I'll buy cards just individual, raw, offline. I do buy individual cards or some very few graded cards, just because I like um, getting cards for a good deal. And so some graded cards you can get for a good deal, but uh, probably not as good deal you can get as you can get raw on most cards. So I do buy just raw cards. Um, I'll also buy into breaks on eBay. And so if you don't know what that is, basically you're just buying a team. So they'll list all of the teams, all of the 30 teams on eBay. So you just bid on the team that you want. And then they'll usually list, uh, or they should list, what all is included in the break. So how many boxes and what boxes and what product they're breaking. And so... You know, you can determine how much you want to pay for your team. And then you just bid on your team. And if you win the auction for your team, then you get all of the cards that are pulled in the break for that team that you won. Uh, so it is, I will say though, make sure to read the description on some of those breaks because some breakers will not, will not ship every card that is pulled. 
such as base cars that only ship what's considered hits. Um, so that would be like paralleled or numbered cards or autographs, mem cards or anything like that. So I, I feel like if I paid the money for the team, send me all of my cards. Um, so that's just me. So I always go to the description whenever I'm buying into a break and just make sure that it lists somewhere on there all cards ship just to avoid that problem or that surprise anyway. And then if not, if it's not listed on there, then you can reach out to the seller and ask them before you place your bid on that particular break and just, you know, get that cleared up right away. Hopefully right away. Hopefully they respond. So, yeah, so that Luca I got in a break. Uh, shout out to Larry over at Larry's Card Emporium. So his break, uh, very fairly priced. So he has been breaking a lot, um, almost almost daily. So he has several breaks uh, a week. So definitely check him out on eBay it's at Larry's Card Emporium. So he breaks uh, mostly football and basketball. But he has some good stuff. I've gotten some very nice cards out of his breaks. I did get a, a Luka Doncic Mystique Emerald out of there, out of one of the breaks that I did early on. So it was an illusions break. So a great guy. Shout out to Larry. So we'll just clean this up. Oh, and I said I was going to hit that with the microfiber. These were in pretty good shape too, so I'm not very worried about these. You can see, oh, I say that and there's some stuff going on over here. There are times where, like in this instance, where I didn't have time to take a look at the card and, you know, kind of go through with a, a fine tooth comb, if you will, and select the cards that I want to submit. And so sometimes if I'm busy during the week and I don't get a chance to input my order and decide which cards I want to do and all of that, uh, then I'll get the notification reminder on my phone that the queue is about to go live or the waiting room is about to go live. And so then I'm just scrambling trying to figure out how, if I'm going to submit an order, then what cards do I want to try to get in and then try to how, what cards, how many cards can I get in before the queue closes down? So sometimes I'll pick cards that I think um, will be good to submit, but then after I get in and I'm getting them ready, like I am now, I'll notice a lot of surface issues or something was way off centering that I didn't catch before or something like that. And so I will actually swap the card out on the order, which you can do. I've only heard one person say ever say that they had issues when they contacted HGA asking if they can do that, and they were told no. Uh, but I didn't ask, I just did it. So I have been doing it and it, it's been fine. If you want to switch a card out for another card on your order, then just mark it off on the packing slip and write in the card that you want to put in its place. And so sometimes that'll happen. Uh, when I'm going through preparing and cleaning these cards, I'll notice it's not in as great shape as I thought it was. And so I'll swap it out for another card and then just mark it out, cross it out on the packing slip and write in the card that I'm replacing it with, prep that card the same way and submit it with the order. So that's just something to keep in mind. I think really the big thing is getting in and getting the slots paid for. So I, I personally wouldn't recommend just putting any any cards in there just to get the slots and then changing out every single card. I wouldn't recommend that um, just because there could be all kinds of issues that occur. Not that it can't be done or shouldn't be done, but you're just opening yourself up for more errors in my opinion. So I just try to minimize risk as much as I can. And so I may do one or two cards that I find I need to switch out. And of course it depends on the sizes of the order. So if I'm doing a nine card sub, 
and there's a couple of cards that I noticed aren't in that great condition or not in as great of condition as I thought, then I might swap out a couple. So really all just depends. Every scenario is different. So this is the last card and it is just a Justin Herbert Crown Royal Base. And I just noticed there is a dimple right above his helmet on the top right. I don't know if the camera picks that up. But it looks like that's really the only thing. Actually see some more smudges. And that's not coming out. So when the light hits, it actually looks like maybe the card itself that's damaged. So I'm going to just hit it with a little bit of moisture. Uh, definitely try to be careful on especially the paper cards when applying any kind of moisture to it. So, but I'm just going to hit it a little bit. And yeah, so it looks like that's damage on the card. So I'm not going to mess with it too much. It is what it is. So this may be a card that I consider changing out because now I'm noticing some stuff over here as well. So as much as I'd like to send in the Herbert and the Burrow together and get back together, I may actually change this one out. So that stuff went away. So we'll see. I'll have to think about it and uh, compare it, see if there's any other card I, I would rather send in. But with that there and that there, I'm, I'm probably looking at the highest a 9 on this card, which would be great. But I don't want them to find something else and then I get an 8.5 or anything lower than a 9. So we'll see. I will think about it. So I don't have a whole lot of time to think about it. I am going to try to get this packaged up and shipped out tomorrow so but I'll take a look at it tonight all right and that's pretty much it and so just throw this last one in the team bag and then uh, just to reiterate again I will be going over so I'm not sealing these off quite yet I will be going back and adding the tape the painter's tape and so it's gonna look like this when it's all said and done when it's ready to go so these are the cards as that I prepared them so I will go back and add that tape and then this is it and so whenever I'm whenever I do get them all submitted and I'll just show you so this is the order so these are the other three that I'm sending in this was my Tuesday order so I got the Barcelona 92 U.S. Basketball Men's Team, a.k.a. the Dream Team. So I will be sending these in um, along with the Luca Hollow. And so I'll just send them like this. And then usually I'll put them in between two pieces of cardboard. So I'll just lay them like that. Put another piece of cardboard here on top and then painter's tape on each side. To keep them like that and then i will actually roll them in bubble wrap around that uh, so i'll put whatever the order is the service level of the order is i'll just write out on a piece of paper 60 day or 30 day in two pieces that fit the cardboard and so i'll just lay them on there and then so say, say this is the bubble wrap i'll just lay them on there with the cards in there See if we can show this real quick. So I have cardboard on both sides, taped up, sealed up. I'll put the 60 day on the back side and on this side on the clear bubble wrap and then wrap it up like that and then tape it, tape it, tape it. And so obviously the bubble wrap is clear. So you'll be able to see whenever they pull it out of the box, this is a 60 day or a 30 day on both sides however they pull it out 
Um, and, but yeah, so that's it. So I'll, I'll put the two pieces of cardboard on, on either side, tape it up on all four sides, then wrap it up in the bubble wrap, tape it up so it's nice and secure. Try not to pack the cardboard down too much just because I don't want it to press against the, the card too much and then cause some surface issues. Uh, but that's also part of the reason why I use a top loader because I feel like it gives you more protection if you have a, if you're covering the full surface, so it's not pressing down on the surface of the card. That top loader gives it that extra layer of protection, and so so yeah. So that's how I'll, I'll ship them out, and then I'll just include the order, the packing slip, in the box. Just fold it up and throw it in the box. Make sure that the box is packed up really well. So that was it. Let me know down in the comments below if you enjoyed this video, if you thought it was helpful, any tips that you may have on doing things differently, on getting on how you prepare orders, send them in for grading. Let me know down in the comments below how you prefer to do it. Thanks for stopping by. Always appreciate you. And we'll see you in the next video. And we will end it on a Luca.